This week on Scout Report, we're looking at three managers who are transforming the culture at their new clubs. They have all made tangible changes that are paying dividends on the pitch, so here are the numbers behind their work. Roger Schmidt this season, Benfica are a team nobody wants to face. Top of the pile in the Liga Portugal, the Lisbon outfits have already put together two 10-game winning streaks. That includes success in the Champions League, where they did the double over Juventus and held their own against PSG to win their group. So what has changed for the Eagles? As usual, they have an exceptional crop of young talent, be it Florentino Luis, Gonzalo Ramos or Enzo Fernandez, recently the subject of a major bid from Chelsea. But credit must go to their manager Roger Schmidt, who arrived in the summer from PSV Eindhoven. His first major change was shifting their formation to a 4-2-3-1 away from the 4-4-2 the club often deployed last term. Schmidt wants Benfica to dominate the ball and his players have dutifully obliged. In the Liga Portugal, they currently average a mammoth 65.8% possession, a figure no team in Europe's top divisions can better. They are quick and dynamic with the ball too, with a pass accuracy rate of 87.5%, while averaging a mammoth 511 short passes per 90, only choosing to go long 8% of the time. For context, that's almost half the amount of passes Manchester City tend to pump long under Guardiola. Key to Schmidt's strategy is splitting the pitch in half. Playing out from the back, the two holding midfield pivots drop deep to provide a numerical advantage. Once they've progressed the ball into the fluid but compact front four, the holding midfielders move forward too, maintaining numbers over their opponents. The fullbacks stay wide, providing width and an outlet once the opposition has been distorted and space created. Enzo Fernandez is key to this strategy. He is completing a massive 10 10.9 progressive passes and 1.8 key passes per 90, rarely losing the ball when in possession. It's no wonder they refused to let him go unless Chelsea met his full 120 million euro release clause. But Benfica and Schmidt's style isn't just possession for possession's sake. Instead, they have proved incredibly effective at creating opportunities in dangerous areas. They are currently scoring at a rate of 2.5 goals per game, a figure which should be higher considering they are creating 4.3 big chances a match too. In Portugal, only Braga betters their 18.8 shots a game, however, no one shoots more in the six-yard box than Benfica. Only four of their goals have come from distance, displaying Schmidt's desire to create high-quality chances than rely on speculative efforts. The 55-year-old deserves plenty of credit for making the Reds defensively sound too. Schmidt wants his players to suffocate the opposition once they lose possession, utilising their high line and intensity. Collectively, the team enters into 7.7 duels, interceptions and tackles per minute of opponent possession. An exhausting rate, while Florentino Luis alone is averaging a monstrous 6.2 tackles and interceptions per 90. The result is their keeper Odysseus Flachodimos is only facing 2.1 shots on target each game, down from 3.3 last term. Schmidt's stock is only growing higher in Benfica. Capitalise on their early promise with silverware and glory, and who knows what the future might hold for the former Bayer Leverkusen boss. Niko Kovac one man restoring his reputation with every passing game is Niko Kovac. Cast aside by Bayern Munich and Monaco, the Croatian headed to Wolfsburg in the summer in the hunt for redemption. And so far, he looks to have found it, reeling off eight wins and losing just four of his 17 matches in charge. But to understand how Kovac has improved Wolfsburg, we must analyse the situation he inherited. 2021-22 was a season to forget for the one-time German champions. Despite a lightning start, things quickly turned sour at the the Volkswagen Arena, and by January the 24th, they sat just two points above the relegation zone. The club had hired Marco van Bommel to replace Oliver Glasner, and the Dutchman immediately overhauled Wolfsburg's defensive approach. Initially, it looked promising. They won their first four games, scored six, averaged 58% possession, and only faced nine shots on target. But there were plenty of problems with their performances. For a start, although they had only conceded once, expected goals against suggested it should have been four, thanks to Kuhn Castiles in goal. And for all their possession, Wolfsburg had only created 50 chances, the 10th most in the Bundesliga, scoring half of their goals from set plays. A better side could easily expose their flaws. Sure enough, they lost four and drew two of their next six matches, conceding 10. With the team devoid of confidence, Van Bommel was fired and Florian Kohlfeld bought in. The young German manager did keep Wolfsburg a 
afloat, but he struggled to patch up the damage Van Bommel had inflicted on the team. This was the challenge Niko Kovac faced too. Wolfsburg started the season slowly, going winless in their first five games. However, Kovac now has the Wolves growling once more on an unbeaten eight-match streak and just four points off the Champions League spots. He has done it by unlocking the qualities that made them so successful under Glasner, defending hard, then transitioning with quick and incisive attacks. Just take their three wins in November, away at Mainz and Hoffenheim and at home to Borussia Dortmund. They averaged 334 passes to the opposition's 497, maintained 40% possession and were outshot 33 times to 58. But they still conceded just one goal and scored seven, outdoing each opponent for big chances created. 0.37 goals per shot on target is the same clinical rate as Bayern Munich. And it's not like Kovac has enjoyed an abundance of forward options, with Jonas Vind, Lukas Metzger, Max Kruse and Patrick Wimmer all suffering injuries. The Croatian has Wolfsburg playing in a 4-5-1, packing the midfield, sitting deep and pushing the opposition wide. Only Augsburg and Borussia Mönchengladbach play more in their own third, while the centre-half pairing of Maxence Lacroix and Sebastian Bornau average 4.7 and 3.7 clearances per 90 respectively, showing how Wolfsburg are happy to deal with any crosses into the box. But it's the Brazilian right-back Otavio who exemplifies the defensive effort under Kovac. He leads the Bundesliga for blocks, ranks 7th for tackles 1 and puts up 3.2 clearances per 92. It may not always be pretty, but Kovac's methods are working. The 51-year-old started his managerial career at Red Bull Salzburg, the same place as Glasner. The pair have similar ideas about football, so it's telling that Kovac looks to be a good fit at Wolfsburg, just as Glasner has brought glory to the Croatian's former home in Eintracht Frankfurt. Eric Ten Hag where else could we finish but with the man transforming Manchester United, Eric Ten Hag? What a job the Dutchman is doing. From 28 matches, United have won 21, a historic win rate of 75%, and that includes victories over big rivals in Manchester City, Arsenal and Liverpool, plus a run to the Carabao Cup semi-finals, plus progression through their Europa League group. Currently third in the table, the mood around Old Trafford is one of optimism rarely enjoyed in the post-Ferguson era. But what has Ten Hag implemented on the pitch? The first characteristic of the new Manchester United that jumps out is their dogged defence. Although no one has seen red, United complete 11.8 fouls per game and have collected 46 yellow cards, the second most in the division. This might not be what the Old Trafford faithful were expecting of Ten Hag, but it displays how the players are prepared to get rough to grind out results. Just take Tyrell Molassi's performance in the recent Manchester derby. Up against Walker and Mares, the young Dutchman completed three tackles, made five clearances and posted four fouls in a full-blooded display. Molassi, like most most of Ten Hag's signings has settled in perfectly at Old Trafford. Lissandro Martinez has silenced concerns over his size, winning 59.5% of his aerial duels, completing 4.9 clearances and tackling close to 80% of dribblers faced, making the club's decision to hand Ajax nearly 60 million euros look justified as does the 70 million spent on Casemiro, arguably their most transformative summer edition. The Brazilian looks every inch of a five times Champions League winner. Despite playing 63% of available minutes, he's already seventh in the Premier League for tackles this term, putting up a massive 3.9 per 90 complemented by two blocks and 1.5 clearances per 92. This effort is being particularly felt at home, where they're the joint best defensive record alongside Newcastle United. It's also so important to the Red Devils, as Ten Hag has recognised that his side lack a natural forward. Rather than force through an attacking style, the Dutchman has adjusted United's approach to fit his squad, and this has seen a return to counter-attacking football. 29 goals and 14 shots per game doesn't scream the United way of attack, 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 with the likes of Brentford and Brighton more potent this term. But no side has scored more on the break, while 90% of their goals have come from open play. United like to invite on pressure before utilising the excellent passing skill set of Bruno Fernandes, Christian Eriksen or Casemiro to bypass the middle third of the pitch and release the forward line. Eriksen and Casemiro are running at 5.6 passes into the final third per 90, only beaten in the squad by Luke Shaw. Their main target, a resurgent Marcus Rashford. On the end of more progressive passes than any starting player, the Englishman has exploded into life, taking 2.7 shots per 90 and finding the net with two of every five efforts. Both are a significant improvement on last season, yet Rashford is touching the ball less than ever before. But with United working hard to create space for him, the 24-year-old has never looked so dangerous. On and off the pitch, Ten Hag has stamped his authority over the squad. Distractions like Cristiano Ronaldo have gone and the team looks unified. It's early days, but the Manchester United board looks to have finally found their man. 
So that was our scout report on three managers transforming their club's culture. But what do you make of our analysis? Let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this Euro Football Daily video, smash the like button. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe so you never miss one of our videos. We'll see you next time.